Hey folks, uh, today we're going to uh, talk about how to build engaging, engaging conversational apps within Microsoft Teams. I'm Ujaswi Chaudhary and I'm a product manager over here in Microsoft Teams responsible for our conversational app platform. And hey folks, my name is Sid and I'm a group engineering manager working in Teams platform. So we're going to be talking about a lot of exciting updates today. So first off, we'll talk about the ability for bots to receive messages without being mentioned. We'll talk about some new features related to adaptive cards that we are rolling out. Um, we'll talk about something new uh, around suggested actions as well, which is really powerful. Um, we'll talk about updates related to application lifecycle that bots can now receive. And we'll talk about single sign-on as well. So first up, let's talk about the ability for bots to receive messages without being mentioned. So ever since we have had uh, announced support for bots inside Microsoft Teams, this has been one of the most requested features, and we now have it available in GA. So this only works for bots who have been granted a specific resource, specific consent permission, and that permission is channel message.read.group. So if your bot has this permission, it would be able to receive messages in the channel without being mentioned. Using this permission is really simple as well. It's a couple line change inside your app manifest, and that's all it takes. So I'm going to get into scenarios next, but before I get there, I want to land one important point of why this is such an important feature. So because your bot can now receive messages without being mentioned, what this means is that you can now write your bot code so that it responds only when it has a very good answer instead of having to answer just because it was at mentioned by a user and give a good enough answer. So that's key. And let me try and give an example here. So we'll take an extreme example. Let's say you had a bot and the only useful thing it does is that when it detects a specific phrase like ABC123, it looks up that number inside your ticketing system and replies with a link. Now, if this bot was something users had to add mention, it would have been a cumbersome kind of experience for users to use. And as a result, what you would find is people are not gonna use that bot that much. But now that your bot can receive messages without being mentioned, it can look for this phrase as a simple regular expression check and then it can reply with information about this ticket inside your ticketing system for the benefit of users. So right away, you would see a lot more uh, happier engagement that users would have with your bot. So this is the thing that makes this uh, powerful. So with this, let's get into some scenarios here. Um, so we'll uh, talk through a bunch of scenarios. We'll start off with FAQ. And so the thing with FAQ is that we have had uh, FAQ bots before and whenever a bunch of folks get together to work on something, collaborate together, it could be a project, it could be a startup, uh, it could be you know uh, parents or hikers or electric car enthusiasts, what have you. There's always a scenario where there's a set of questions that get asked frequently, and people have tried to build bots to help with these. But the challenge you have as a bot developer for an FAQ bot is you've got a bootstrapping problem. Your bot will not know answers to all the questions users can ask in the beginning. And as a result, when users at mention your bot to ask it something, because it won't have the answer, they'll not try your bot ever again. So now, because of this feature, you have a chance to actually solve FAQ better than before. So now, because of this, let's take the electric car enthusiast example. You could have a channel in your team where people can ask questions, right? So let's say someone comes in and asks, hey, how, how do I get an electric car charger installed in my home? So now your bot can look for specific keywords in the messages posted, and it could look for electric car charger installation, and then look for messages that were asked before, or posted in that channel before, and then reply with links to those messages under this message. So right away, the user that posted this message would get value out of your bot. So this is one way um, how FAQ scenario is better. The other way FAQ can be better now is you can have a mapping of keywords to subject matter experts, and then your bot can then at mention those people as a reply to the message. So here are two ways how FAQ scenario can now be much better than before uh, in your bots. So we'll talk about kudos next. And uh, kudos is another one of those scenarios where it was possible earlier, right? So we had praise available as an app in Teams. Uh, we also have apps available in our store like Disco um, that you can use to give kudos to people. But as a user, they require you to take a bunch of extra steps to be able to give kudos to someone so that this app can track it. Um, but I would argue it's more natural to just thank people 
uh, give kudos to people in just plain English. That's how most people do it. But up until now, your bots couldn't, you know, listen for those things and update a leaderboard or anything like that. And now that's possible. So here's a screenshot where uh, someone is thanking someone for uh, collaboration and teamwork. And a, a bot can now look for these keywords and an update uh, a leaderboard in the back end um, or also respond with a card that allows others to pile on as well. So again, kudos uh, kind of scenario can also be better now than before. So up next, we'll talk about chat ops, which is one of my favorite scenarios as an EM. Um, so with chat ops, one of the big scenarios we usually have is um, there's an outage and there's a discussion that happens related to that outage. And you want to make that discussion archived into the outage itself so that it can be searched and all sorts of good things there. Uh, but that was also hard up until now. But again, because bots can now receive messages, without being mentioned, a bot can start a discussion about an outage that just happened, and then look at the replies that happened under that discussion, and then save that in your ticketing system if that's what you want. Um, that's one way chat offs can be better. The other one is, again, um, users can now more naturally ask for information, like who is the current on call, and your bot can run some Azure Cognitive Services intent detection and then reply with the appropriate answer. So chat ops can be better as well. And this is important because in chat ops, like things are moving so fast, it's all like heat of the moment kind of thing. So the more easier you can make it for people doing the outreach, the better off you are. So uh, this is the last thing I'm gonna cover. Um, this goes back to the example I had earlier. And the key here is um, when you're asking people to add mentioned bots, and send things in specific syntax, you're asking them to do something new. And some people will do it, but it's always hard to get people to do and learn new things than modifying a bot to respond to, you know, deal with how people are used to doing things. But now because of this feature, here's one example where um, you can have a simple keyword to link resolver and your bot can come in and reply uh, with the link based on the keyword that detected in the message. So this is what I have um, for the feature of bots being able to mention without boss being able to get messages without being mentioned. So uh, up next, I'm going to hand it to Ajasvi to talk about the adaptive card updates. Thanks, Sid. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the latest features with adaptive cards in Teams. So we think of adaptive cards as basically the front end for your conversational apps. And we spend a lot of time making sure that they're polished and simple to use for our users. And for you developers, we want to make sure that you have as many scenarios and features and capabilities possible that you can build on top of adaptive cards. So the first feature we've got over here is full with adaptive cards. Uh, on the left is the old adaptive card, and then the right is the new one. And essentially, you can see is that with full with adaptive cards, you've got more space to play with, and your uh, and your application ends up looking more sleeker and polished. So this is only one line of change, and we would highly encourage you to uh, to make this change if you're dealing with too much text and content within your app. Uh, next up, we've got static autocomplete. Uh, now, what you can see over here is that uh, filling out a form, uh, in this case, an expense report, and uh, ends up being like a uh, filling out a form ends up being a pretty typical scenario within Microsoft Teams. And sometimes users have to like scroll through like 50, 60, or tens of uh, or hundreds of categories in order to select what they want. And rather than having having them scroll. Uh, you can just use uh, this feature that we're calling over here as static autocomplete, which as it types, it's going to uh, zero in on what the user wants, and then they can easily select it from there and uh, complete the workflow. Next up, we've got dynamic autocomplete. This is a little more nuanced version of static autocomplete. And what this basically is, is it's search for your application, for your conversational apps within Microsoft Teams. You will have an adaptive card, and you can basically enable search to your application's backend. And like the possibilities over here are pretty much endless in terms of what you could build. Next up, we've got People Picker. And People Picker is just one of those scenarios that we've heard from many application developers that comes across um, uh, that comes across as vital for your workflows. So if you can think of like you want to create a new ticket and assign assign that ticket to someone, or if you want to ask for an approval request from your manager, uh, pretty much Teams is a collaborative app, right? So you would have a lot of workflows where you would assign things to people and people would come together to work on a particular problem. And if you've got one of the scenarios, uh, we would highly recommend you leveraging the inbox people picker with an adaptive cards uh, for your apps. Uh, and for a last feature, we've got something uh, very special, uh, which is user-specific views. Again, as I said, right, Teams is a collaborative app. 
uh, it's a collaboration platform. And really the scenarios that make the most sense and that shine the most is where you have a bunch of people who are working together on a singular workflow. So for example, what you can see over here, there has been a boiler le leakage incident. And the first person, Megan, has gone ahead and created a, a report that says, uh, you know, there's a new incident, uh, there is a boiler leakage. Uh, could someone please take a look? Now, from her perspective, the action that she has has the ability to, like, you know, edit the incident and and add more information to it. Then for Alex, who the incident gets assigned to, uh, they can go ahead and resolve it. And and ultimately, there are other people within uh, the channel who should just be only able to like view the incident. They shouldn't have necessarily have the ability to you know uh, to to edit to edit or resolve the incident. And if you have scenarios where like multiple multiple people are collaborating and working together on the same workflow, user specific views will solve many and many of them. Uh, in terms of resources, uh, you know, we've got blog posts, we've got like detailed documentation on Microsoft Teams that we've on, on our developer website that we've invested a lot in terms of enabling you to use uh, adaptive cards for. So please do, do go ahead and check that out. Next up, uh, we've got a new feature. It's called Bot Suggested Actions. And uh, this was again a highly requested developer feature. It's available both on desktop and mobile. And essentially what it does is it allows you uh, the application developer, the conversational application developer, to suggest actions to the user uh, in the one-on-one -on -one bot chat stream. This is going to be more relevant. Uh, this is going to be highly relevant in mobile, where you know users typically don't like to type, and they would much rather select buttons to move the workflow along. One thing to call out over here: the dis difference between you know having buttons inside adaptive cards versus suggested actions is that. Uh, the adaptive card is static, so if the user scrolls up and down, they might they might lose the workflow. But these things are going to stick with the user, and they will. Uh, and and it's a better way of keeping the user on rail uh, for your app. Uh, next up, we've got events and application lifecycle. So, you know, if you're building a bot and a conversational app within Microsoft Teams. Uh, it's very important to understand what's happening in the context that you're operating in, whether it's a team, or if you're operating in the context of a team, you should know when a channel was created or a channel was restored, if a team was deleted, or if a team has been archived, so you can do like take the necessary action on your side, as well as like build more engaging scenarios. So one of the events that we released uh, last year that we think is gonna be relevant to a lot of bot developers is gonna be the installation update event. So every time your application or your bot is installed or uninstalled from a, uh, from a thread, you will get this event. And two critical scenarios you can use this for is, number one, you can use it to send an introductory message from your bot on installation. And two, on, on, uh, on uninstall, you can use it to clean up and delete any user or, or thread-specific data and meet your privacy requirements. Uh, next up, we've got, uh, and these are the resources for you over here. Uh, we've got a blog post that describes the full life cycle as well as like uh, you know uh, uh, specifics about the various uh, conversational and installation events in Teams. Um, lastly, we've got single sign-on. So, if your application requires access to any sort of uh, privileged data within uh, Microsoft 365, uh, let's say for example, if you want to access the user's calendar, we would highly recommend you to use single sign-on. With single sign-on, the user only needs to give uh, permissions once. And after that, uh, their experience of using your app is going to be pretty much seamless. And we've invested, uh, in terms of resources, we've invested a lot in terms of samples, uh, click-through guides, step-by-step uh, -step guides for both bots and message extensions, as, as well as samples on uh, GitHub. So please do check those out. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the session today. Uh, we hope you have an amazing build. And uh, please let us know what applications you build.